Hello, geometry folks, and welcome to Exploring Solids. We're going to be thinking 3D today, and so you need your notes, your flip chart that you made in class, a pen and a pencil, and your thinking caps. Okay, now we did some exploring on solids today in class, and we're going to continue that today. All right, so let's think what are solids well there's prisms pyramids cones cylinders and spheres and as you can see i have a cylinder and these are all 3d shapes okay so these are all solids and we can measure different things with our solids including surface area and volume okay and we're going to do that and so what i need you to do is i need you to fill out the chart that you made in class today and on the front of it I would like you to write polyhedron and Euler's theorem and then label each tab as prism cylinder pyramid cone and sphere now these are all the things that we are going to talk about in this chapter and so we need um, to have some notes written down now today um, we are only going to be talking about polyhedrons and Euler's theorem. Okay, we won't be working inside the foldable, so just make sure that you write down the stuff with the polyhedron and Euler's theorem. So take a minute and do that if you need to and pause. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about polyhedrons. Polyhedron is a solid that's three dimensional and it has flat faces with no curves. Now, some of the solids that we're going to talk about are going to have curves, so they don't fall underneath the title of polyhedrons, but some of them do. So today we're going to just focus on the polyhedrons and what it means to be a polyhedron. So make sure that you write this on the front of your flip chart. A polyhedron is a solid with sides. The sides are called faces, and they are polygons. So they're either squares, rectangles, pentagon, hexagon, whatever it is, but they are a polygon. The edge, so it has an edge where the two faces meet. Every polyhedron has some edges. And they also have a vertex where the point, it's a point where three or more edges meet okay so when um, you have a vertex okay every polyhedron is going to have a vert some sort of vertex or vertices multiple ver vertexes we call that vertices okay but remember a polyhedron will never have curves so make sure you have this written down and now we're going to go through and talk about what would be classified as a polyhedron and what wouldn't so this would be a polyhedron, okay? And you can see that the pink side here is the face, is a face. So we could count how many faces. We kind of did this in class today. Um, we could also talk about an edge. So you can see that this would be an edge. An edge is where two faces are meeting. And then a vertex is where the three points or three edges come together and meet. So this is an edge, an edge, and an edge, and we have a vertex. So these are all vertices, and we could count those up, okay? So let's go through a few of them and see if you can tell me if it's a polyhedron or not. Well, I'm going to actually, but maybe you can make a guess before I say yes or no, all right? And maybe you can tell me what this is called. So I would call this, for most of you, this is like the bottom of an ice cream cone. So this is a cone. And is this a polyhedron? No, it is not because it has curves. Now, why is it still going to be something I talk about? Because it is a solid. It's just not a specific type of solid as a polyhedron is. So this is not a polyhedron, but it is still a 3D solid, and we will still talk about area, surface area and volume with it, but it's just not a polyhedron. This one, maybe you already know, it's some sort of pyramid because pyramids always come to a point, one vertex way up here at the top. So it is a pyramid, 
this would be called a rectangular pyramid. And you're probably thinking, oh, what's a rectangular? How do you know it's a rectangular pyramid? It's a rectangular pyramid because the base is a rectangle. Okay, and we'll talk more about that in the coming days. And would you say this is a polyhedron? I would say it's a polyhedron because it has no curves. Okay, what am I and am I a polyhedron? Well, I can honestly tell you that it's not a polyhedron, and I'm sure you're all thinking that because there are curves, okay? But what am I? Well, this is like a pop can. It's a cylinder, okay? But it is not a polyhedron. What am I? Am I a polyhedron? So this one, it's got all these points coming to a vertex right here. It's going to be a pyramid. This one is a pentagonal pyramid. Pentagon, because if I count the base, it's always based on the base. The base makes, makes a pentagon. One, two, three, four, five sides. And so this is a pentagonal pyramid. And it is a polyhedron. Okay. What about this one? Well, this one is a prism. Now, depending on what these sides would be, I think it would be a square prism because I, I believe if these, they look all the same, um, it's kind of a square prism toppled over. Um, it's based on, you know, the side. So if I said those were all the same, we would say this is a square prism. Now, am I a polyhedron? Yes, this is a polyhedron because, again, it has no curves. So it would be a polyhedron. What about this one? This one is, looks like a circle. Okay. Yeah, but you kind of see that it's kind of spherical. So this one would be a sphere. And because it has curves, it would not be a polyhedron. All right. So... Prisms and pyramids are polyhedrons. And how do we name them? Okay, well, we name them based on their bases. Okay, so you're looking for the two bases that are parallel and congruent. The two things that are parallel and congruent will be what determine what type of prism it is. So you can see... This base right here is congruent to that base back there, and they look like rectangles. So this would be a rectangular prism. This would be called a triangular prism because the two triangles are congruent. And so you can see there's the triangle, one triangle, and there's the other triangle. And they're, they're congruent and they're parallel. That's what makes it a triangular prism. Okay, now, how do we name a pyramid? I think you were kind of getting that when I was going through the pyramids. But the pyramid is also named by the shape of its base. So this is a square pyramid because the base is all square, 90 degrees, and all sides are congruent. This would be a triangular base. Here's where they all meet, the tippy top. And then the base right here would be a triangle. It's kind of toppled over. Okay. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and um, see if we can name the polyhedron, tell whether it is a polyhedron, and if so, name it, and then find the faces, vertices, and edges. Now, you don't have to write these down, but just pay close attention and make sure you know how to do this. So this would be a polyhedron because it doesn't have any curves. And more specifically, just like on the last side, this would be a triangular prism. Okay, so it's a polyhedron that's a triangular prism. Now, if I wanted to find the number of faces, vertices, and edges, you kind of did that in class today, but let's just make sure we know how to do this. It has this face, it has that face, okay, those two triangle faces, and then it has three more faces. It's got the one on the bottom here, one slanted, and one off to the side. So it has five faces. So I'm just going to say F equals five. Okay, vertices, vertices is where they meet. If I count those all up, one, two, three, four, five, six. So vertices would be six. And then how many edges would it have?
count those up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So edges would equal nine. And again, this was a triangular. Oops. Sorry about that. This is a ooh, triangular. My computer's acting up a little bit here. Oh, I keep messing that up. Sorry. Triangular prism. All right. What about the next one? Well, this one is a square pyramid. Is it a polyhedron? Yes, it is. Okay. Because it has no curves. How many faces does it have? It has the bottom and then one, two, three, four triangles around the outside. So it would have five faces. How many vertices would it have? Well, let's count it. One, two, three, four, five. Five vertices. And how many edges? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight edges. Okay. So say that you want to verify that you counted the right number of faces, vertices, and edges. Well, now I want you to go back to that flip chart again, and I want you to write Euler's theorem. Now, some of you came up with this in class, not exactly the way I did, but it means basically the same thing. So Euler's theorem is the number of faces and edges and vertices in a polyhedron that is related by this formula. Faces plus vertices equals edges plus 2. Now, many of you had faces plus vertices minus 2 equals edges. If I subtract 2, does that equal E? Yes. So these are essentially the same equations, all right? So we have Euler's theorem. And now we're going to go ahead and do um, one example with that just to make sure that it works out for you. So we are going to apply Euler's theorem by finding the faces, the edges, and the vertices, and then check it using our theorem. So what's our theorem again? Our theorem is faces plus vertices equals edges plus 2. Okay, let's count the faces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 faces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 vertices. So that equals 14. Okay. Now edges. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Whoops, I missed 1, 10, 11. Let me do that again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 edges plus 2 would be 14. Now, say you were trying to count it and you couldn't make it work. Well, you should know that 12 plus 2 should also give me 14. So maybe you're having trouble with the edges or maybe you're having trouble finding the vertices. Um, whatever you're tr having trouble finding, you just want to make sure that these two sides are congruent to one another. And then that would be applying Euler's theorem. Okay, that's all, folks. Thanks for taking good notes and paying attention. And tomorrow we'll come back and practice it for another day. Thank you.